In a small village in Mirbrook, England, resides the Robertson family. The father, 47-year-old Dougal, the mother, Lynn, and their four children, 17-year-old Douglas, 16-year-old Anne, and two nine-year-old twins, Neil and Sandy. The family owns a small dairy farm and lives a quiet, peaceful life. But in 1971, the family went on a daring voyage where they would sail across the globe on a 43-foot wooden sooner. Unfortunately, their trip took an unexpected turn and they ended up being stranded at sea for weeks. The idea of sailing around the globe first came up from his nine-year-old son, Neil. One night, while reading a bedtime story about Robin Knox Johnson, the first person who single-handedly circumnavigated the globe without making a stop, Neil suggested that they should do the same thing. The father was hesitant at first, but soon realized that it would be a terrific family trip idea and also a great opportunity for his kids to see the wonders of the world rather than being stuck on an isolated dairy farm. But another reason why he wanted to do it is because the farm was on the verge of bankruptcy, so he thought sailing around the globe would be a great escape. In 1971, Dougal sold the farm and used the remainder of his family's life savings to buy a 43-foot wooden sooner called Lucette. The boat was built in 1922, almost 50 years old. But despite its age and the multiple repairs that it had gone through, Dougal was confident it was enough to withstand the long voyage around the world. The family left their hometown of Mirbrook and traveled to Falmouth, southwest of England. There, the 43-foot wooden sooner awaits them. This was their first sailing trip together, and none of them, except the father, had any experience. Dougal was a former Marine and was quite familiar with navigating boats. Their plan was to sail across the Atlantic Ocean, then pass through the Panama Canal, the waterway that connects the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. The family had zero planning on this trip. They didn't do a practice sail in the nearby waters. Instead, they went head straight into the journey. They left Falmouth and sailed across the Atlantic. Along the way, they encountered some heavy rain and managed through it. They made various stopovers in the Caribbean to restock on food supplies. Their next plan was to reach the Pacific Ocean. Before leaving to continue their voyage, the daughter, Anne, decided to stay behind in the Caribbean. Now, the reason why she did this is unclear. Nonetheless, the family granted her wish, but their journey to circumnavigate the globe continued. They grew an interest in an archipelago called the Galapagos Islands, located just west of Ecuador. The place is known for its volcanic formations, distinct colored sands, and wonderful wildlife. Various animal species are found here. In fact, the place was a source of inspiration for Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, so it's a unique destination that they wanted to visit. Along their journey, they met a man named Robin and invited him onto their boat. They took him in to help them guide them to the Galapagos Islands and the remaining journey across the Pacific. They'd crossed the Panama Canal and reached the Galapagos Islands. There, they stayed for a couple of weeks to explore the island and sightsee various animals. The family had a lot of fun on their stay. Unfortunately, this would be their last bit of enjoyment before tragedy struck. They departed from Galapagos Islands on June 15, 1972. While sailing 200 miles west of the archipelago, they felt a sudden tremble. Initially, they thought they had hit some debris, but as soon as they looked down the water to check on what happened, they were greeted by a pod of orcas sailing their boat. There were several of them swarming and preparing to attack again. They tried to scare them away. However, in retaliation, the orcas continued to strike their boat until it punctured a huge hole. Water quickly rushed inside, which left them little time to act and fix the situation. The attack was constant, as if the boat was being hit by a sledgehammer. Eventually, the boat became unfixable, and the family was left with no other choice but to release the two emergency lifeboats, an inflatable life raft, and a long dinghy. They rushed on board and brought a few necessary items with them. In less than a minute, the Lucette completely sank. Even though they got away safely, they still feared the orcas would attack them and capsized their life rafts, 
which would leave them to drown or become food to the animals. Luckily, the orcas showed no aggression and swam away. Orcas aren't known to attack humans, and it only occurs on very rare occasions. As soon as the danger was gone, the family felt a sense of relief. But this was only the beginning of their struggle. With no radio and only a few rations on hand, their time was ticking. To prevent them from being separated, the long dinghy and the inflatable raft were connected together with a wire rope. The initial plan was to turn back and sail to the Galapagos Island, then wait for a rescue team to come pick them up. However, Dougal realized that the strong water current was going in the opposite direction, and it was unlikely that they would reach the island. Also, he knew they didn't have enough food before they could make it to land. So, he made a bold decision, and that is to sail towards the doldrums. The doldrums is a region near the equator, which is known to have low winds and weak ocean current, a nightmare for those sailing in big boats since they sometimes get stuck in windless waters, but a perfect spot for their small lifeboats to keep afloat. The raft came equipped with a survival kit, nine liters of water, eight flares, a first aid kit, a fishing kit, a signal mirror, a knife, two sea anchors, three paddles, and a wooden bellows an instrument that was used to keep the inflatable raft afloat. Their biggest problem was dehydration. It took just three days for their water to run out. Even though they were surrounded by water, you would think staying hydrated wouldn't be a problem. However, ocean water is not considered safe to drink since it contains various harmful bacteria that could damage the human body. Thus, they needed to rely on rainwater to keep them hydrated. While it isn't exactly the cleanest water, it was the best option they had. This was also one of the reasons why Dougal decided to sail towards the doldrums, where rainfall is more likely to occur. But the downside of this is that due to the nature of the doldrum zone, it is known to have thunderstorms. Dougal took the risk to go to the region to collect rainwater and hoped that a boat would spot them before a thunderstorm hit. The first week at sea was brutal. Sun beamed down on their skin and they had to share what little rations they had. Their food lasted for a few days. Then they had to settle on eating raw sea creatures. They used their bare hands and the tools available to hunt sea turtles. They drank its blood and rendered its fat to use it as a skin ointment to relieve sunburns. They would also catch various fish and dried them. This became their main source of food. Even though they managed to store dried fish for survival, they encountered a bigger problem. On the 14th day, the inflatable raft started leaking, and the bellows they used to keep the raft afloat broke. They tried fixing it, but the damage was too severe. Thus, they had to move and squeeze together on the dinghy. The only items they brought along with them were food, water, and flares. The rest were left behind. Once the inflatable raft was gone, it was a matter of time before the dinghy they were on would be the next to sink. With little to no space, their legs started to get sore, and it reached the point that they didn't want to stand up and stretch since they could possibly tip the dinghy over. At night, both Dougal and Lynn had to stay awake to keep an eye on their children in case one of them fell over in the water while sleeping. Every day, Dougal had a constant fear of potential threats. To calm his nerves, he started writing a journal describing their everyday life stranded in the middle of the Pacific. He knew he needed to stay strong to overcome this since he was the one who was responsible for the whole trip. To keep up their spirits, the family sang and told stories together. This helped them to get their mind off of their current situation, and most importantly, it helped them remain hopeful. After 38 days at sea, Dougal noticed a boat from afar. He used this opportunity to light up the flare he'd been saving up for and hoped that the boat would notice them. The flare lasted for a minute before it burned out. The boat from afar didn't show any signs of attention. From there, the family thought that the boat didn't see their emergency flare. But five minutes later, the bow of the boat slowly turned and pointed towards them. They were picked up by a Japanese fishing boat on its way to the Panama Canal. The family was so dehydrated and had lost a significant amount of weight. The fishermen offered them food until they reached land, 
and were rushed to the hospital for a checkup. The long dinghy was donated and is now on display at the National Maritime Museum in Falmouth, England.